Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Senator Kane. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thanks to our witnesses. I, I want to focus on Latin America, following up on Senator Haggerty's reference to our recent trip with the chairman to um, the Americas in April. Um, it's one thing to talk about uh, Chinese uh, investment um, and coercion or competitiveness, but we got to have something on the table to counter it. Um, the 34 countries in Latin America and the Caribbean, the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, are making significant investments in 21 of the 34 countries. A lot of the investment are dual use investments that could be both for civilian but also for military and national security purposes, nuclear power, space stations. The Chinese have 40 port construction or upgrading projects in Latin America and the Caribbean. And I just struggle to see what this administration is doing in Latin America that has any heft to it. Um, Ecuador threw out a pro-China government in 2021 and elected a pro-U.S. president who, within a few months after his election, when we visited him, he said, you don't have the big checkbook that China does, I get it, but just do a trade deal with us. Ecuador is the only nation on the Pacific coast from Yukon to Patagonia that didn't have a trade deal with the United States. And they said, just add us into the Columbia trade deal. Or, or you just renegotiated NAFTA into an MCA with high labor and environmental standards. Democrats and Republicans supported that renego. Add us into that, but just show us that if you can't write us a big check like the Chinese can, at least you're interested in a pro-US ally in South America. We didn't do it. That government has collapsed. It is likely to go back to a pro-China government in the elections that would happen between now and the end of the year. We had two and a half years to try to show this erstwhile ally that wanted to lean toward the United States that there was some value in leaning that way, and we really did nothing. We did nothing, and we probably have lost an opportunity there. Uruguay, a nation that's been a, a strong ally of the United States, you know, had to practically beg to get the president when he was in the United States to have a few minutes with President Biden in the, in the Oval Office. If we're not willing to pay attention and be responsive to allies in even modest ways, well then we can lecture people all we want about not accepting Chinese largesse, but it's hardly a persuasive position. The I've, I've had meetings with the U.S. Trade Rep asking about, what about trade deals in the Americas? And, and I get told that politically they're a bad idea. And, I've, and my response was, well, wait a minute, you're the trade rep. Let me worry about politics. I'm the elected official. You're the trade rep. Why aren't we exploring trade? And so what we're doing in the Americas is the, is APEP. The uh, president announced America's Partnership for Economic Prosperity in June of 2022. That was 13 months ago. We've received in my office, I'm chairman of the Americas Subcommittee here, a list of countries participating an initial concept note, but now we're being told that the administration is pivoting APEP to a new revamped approach. We've gotten no information on the approach. No firm agreements have come out of APEP. No multilateral work on specific issues. No announced partnerships to, to compare. The president also announced the Indo-Pacific Economic Framework in May of 22, one month before APEP. And on that framework, we've seen multiple rounds of talks. The administration has launched a workforce development partnership. And recently, the countries signed an initial agreement on a supply chain pillar, which I think can be very helpful. Why are we not, in our own neighborhood, investing more with nations that are our allies and want to deepen the relationship and allowing China to just run roughshod? Thank you for your question. Um, I, I want to thank him for the question, too. Yeah. Because no, and then, I, and I echo all of his sentiments, and I'm thrilled that there is a colleague other than me who cares about Latin America. I know Senator Haggerty does as well. And I care, too, a lot, sir. I've spent a lifetime working on, on Latin America. Uh, look, I'll, I'll let USTR deal with the, with the trade issue. Uh, we've done um, a number of things that I'm very happy we've been able to accomplish with Ecuador. Uh, we're working now on a port at PGII. We, are work, we had a, a historic uh, debt for nature swap. Um, obviously, we could do more. Uh, on, on APEP, um, uh, I co-lead that with our, our, our colleagues at USTR. 
Uh, we have been uh, talking to countries and getting input uh, from them. We, uh, we now have a negotiator who is in, uh, in Colombia right now making sure that what we offer, what we're talking about, is, uh, is, uh, is, is something that's welcome. But, so, and, I, and I take your criticism, but let me, let me just, if I may, just point. Yeah, I want you to push back if I'm wrong. No, no, I want well, you to tell so me let, let, I'm wrong. Let or... me push back uh, yes. slightly, and I realize that, that I do that at my peril, perhaps. But I, uh, if, if tariffs is not what's keeping Latin America from growing and, from, and, 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 and the private sector from investing, what's, if, if, if tariffs were all that it took, uh, this wouldn't be an issue. Um, 12 of the 20 FTAs that we have are with Latin America. Eight of the APEP countries uh, have FTAs already. Our, our average MFN tariffs with Latin America are less than 1%. So it's not about market access. It's about corruption. It's about uh, lack of transparency. It's about lack of infrastructure. It's about health frameworks that don't work. It's government, uh, government instability. Those are the things that we're trying to work on in APEP. So we're looking at labor rights so that uh, so that you don't have the, the, the instability, so that you don't have the gangs. It's talking about the rule of law so that investors can, 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 can go in it. So those are the things that we're going to focus on, uh, realizing that uh, uh, you know, there are other things we could do as well. But I, I would, I, I, And I want you to focus on those things. But look, if China's offer is, we're not demanding any reform. Here's some money. You know, here's an investment. And our offer is, yeah, once we help you improve all these aspects of yourself, you know, then we're open to more interaction. I mean, that is just such a, a, an imbalance. And, and we will fall farther and farther and farther behind. I'm going to give one bit of good news here. Um, and, and I'm over time, and I'm sorry for that. Yeah. I, the CHIPS Act had an international investment fund, and there was just an announcement of a U.S. Costa Rica partnership because there are chips manufactured in Costa Rica. Actually, the plant that closed down went to China, reopened. Um, and the U.S. is partnering with Costa Rica on that. That's a really good thing. I mean, Costa Rica is forward-leaning, the Alliance for Democracy and Development. So I can see some instances where we are strategically using resources. But I, j I just feel the imbalance is so significant. And it's going to get worse and worse and worse until we decide that we ought to prioritize our own neighborhood uh, and make investments. I have a hard time understanding why this Indo-Pacific uh, partnership has moved out a lot faster than APEP has. And so I'm over my time, but just I'm going to ask this question every time I've got a State Department or USAID or administration official before me in this meeting until I start hearing not just plans, but results. I thank you, Mr. Chair. Well, well thank you, Senator Kennedy. Mr. Secretary, I have to say, and you know I have a great deal of respect for you. I've supported your nominations. But that answer, we want all those things to happen. 